This is At the Public Library, the video source for news and information about the San Francisco Public Library system. This month's show features all you need to know about this year's summer reading program for children, something new, staff favorites, and a look at the Ricky Kinetic Sculpture now gracing the front of the new main library, as well as listings of upcoming programs and events for children, teens, and adults at the Public Library. So Loretta, what are you reading right now? I've just started The Wedding by Dorothy West. Dorothy West is one of the few remaining writers of the Harlem Renaissance, and she's writing from her childhood experiences about the black middle class that lived at Martha Vineyard, and she's telling the story of a family whose youngest daughter who's about to be married. And it's a very intriguing story with wonderful characters, and anyone who's familiar with the writers of the Harlem Renaissance will love this classic novel by Dorothy West. Hey kids, have fun this summer reading books and earning prizes at the San Francisco Public Library. Children 13 years and younger can sign up for the Children's Summer Reading Club, Read Around the City, at their neighborhood branch library, June 14th through August 9th. This year's Summer Reading Club is better than ever with lots of great books, entertainment, and fantastic prizes. Here's how the program works. After signing up, kids check out any books they want. When they're finished reading or having books read to them if they don't read yet, they come back to the library and record the time they've spent reading. A prize such as colorful bookmarks, stickers, and buttons are awarded for every two hours spent reading. And after eight hours, readers get to choose one of the following grand prizes. Two entries to the California Academy of Sciences and the Morrison Planetarium Sky Show. Two tickets to the Bay Area Discovery Museum. Two admissions to the San Francisco Zoo. Two tickets to a Giants baseball game. Or a great brand new paperback book. Throughout the eight weeks of the Summer Reading Club, the branches and the main library will host a wide variety of fun and entertaining programs with clowns, singers, dancers, storytellers, magicians, and more. So join the fun and sign up to read around the city this summer at the San Francisco Public Library. This month, many branches are hosting children's summer reading kickoff celebrations. Sign up for the summer reading program and join the fun with Jimbo the Clown on Wednesday, June 11th, 7 p.m. at the Glen Park branch. On Saturday, June 14th at 11 a.m., the Excelsior branch will celebrate the summer reading club with Magic Dan, the magician. Also on Saturday the 14th at 3 p.m., Walter the Giant Storyteller will kick off the summer reading fun at the Richmond branch. On Tuesday, June 17th at 10.30 a.m., the Ortega Branch will host a special summer reading program with magician Joe Hoffman. Ventriloquist Steve Cheney and his dummy Cornelius Crow will help kick off three summer reading programs this month. First, on Monday, June 16th, 3 p.m. at the Sunset Branch, and on Wednesday, June 18th, 3 p.m. at the Western Edition Branch. And on Saturday, June 21st, Steve and Cornelius will stop by the Petrero Branch at 4 p.m. to celebrate summer reading. Children's summer reading programs will be taking place throughout the summer at the San Francisco Public Library. Call or stop by your neighborhood branch library for more information. Or check out the children's program schedule in the printed version of At the Public Library, published monthly by the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library and available at all San Francisco Public Libraries. Author Bill Picklehaupt returns to the library with a slide presentation based on his book, Shanghai in San Francisco. The true story of shanghaiing, or kidnapping men for a voyage to sea, and the politicians who let it happen for over 60 years, will be told through the use of first-hand accounts, photographs, and line drawings. It's all at the Park Branch on Saturday, June 21st at 2 p.m. The following week, on Saturday, June 28th, the San Francisco Bibliophiles meets for their monthly book discussion group in Russian. Sponsored by the Book Arts and Special Collections Center of the library, they meet from 2 to 4 p.m. in the main library's Latino-Hispanic Community Meeting Room on the last Saturday 
of every month. To close out June's literary events, Carol Landis performs in The Yellow Wallpaper, a powerful dramatization of a woman's heroic struggle to retain her sanity and of her ultimate descent into madness. This special evening of drama and music is based on the classic gothic thriller written by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, one of America's leading feminist and intellectuals of the early 20th century. The Yellow Wallpaper will be at the Sunset Branch on Monday, June 30th at 7 p.m. And finally, on July 1st, the Eureka Valley Harvey Milk Memorial Branch Library is hosting a reading to celebrate the publication of Liberating Minds, the Stories and Professional Lives of Gay, Lesbian, and Bisexual Librarians and Their Advocates. That's July 1st at 7 p.m. at 3555 16th Street, near Market. How to Find What You Want at the San Francisco Public Library is a free orientation and training program that introduces patrons to the library's online public access catalog computer system. The demonstrations given by staff librarians of the main library's Information Services Department present the basic steps in searching for books, magazines, and other materials by author, title, or subject. The librarians also introduce and demonstrate how to use the various databases that are available through the library's online catalog. The programs take place at the main library in the Corette Auditorium. This month, the How to Find What You Want at the San Francisco Public Library programs will be held every Tuesday afternoon at 4.30. The Main Library International Center is now presenting the How to Find What You Want at the San Francisco Public Library orientation and demonstration in Spanish, Mandarin, and Japanese. The Spanish orientation will take place on Saturday, May 24th, 11 a.m. in the Corad Auditorium. The Mandarin program will be given in the sixth floor training room in the main library on Friday, June 6th from 2 to 4 p.m. And the next online catalog demonstration presented in Japanese will take place in the main library sixth floor training room on June 20th from 1 to 3 p.m. For more information about multilingual public access catalog trainings, phone the International Center at 557-4430. And for patrons interested in the Internet, the Information Services Department of the Main Library will present Internet Basics with Mark Webb, an introduction to the Internet and how to use the Lynx and Netscape browsers. Internet Basics with Mark Webb will be presented in the Corette Auditorium at the Main Library on Thursday, May 22nd and Thursday, June 19th, with both programs starting at 6.30 p.m. For your information, the Library is offering free workshops about obtaining American citizenship. Sponsored by Centro Legal de la Raza, the citizenship workshops are on the first Saturday of the month from 11.30 a.m to 1 p.m. at the Excelsior Branch Library, and every fourth Saturday in the Main Library's Latino-Hispanic Community Meeting Room from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. All the workshops are conducted in Spanish and English. The San Francisco Public Library Full Commission meets the first Tuesday of every month at 5.30 p.m. The Finance, Operations, and Building Committee meets on the third Tuesday of the month at 4 p.m. And the Planning and Policy Committee meets the third Thursday of the month at 4.30 p.m. All Library Commission meetings are now being held in the Corette Auditorium on the lower level of the main library. If you've got some legal questions, the Volunteer Legal Services Program of the San Francisco Bar Association offers a free legal advice and referral clinic the second Saturday of each month in the Main Library's Latino-Hispanic Community Meeting Room at 10 a.m. And finally, the library system will be closed in honor of Independence Day on Friday, July 4th. Do you know where Camera Obscura is located? What's your favorite movie filmed in San Francisco? 
Can you name three books set in San Francisco neighborhoods? And what's the weirdest thing written on the bulletin board in your neighborhood laundromat? If you're curious about the answers to these questions, get involved in Streets of San Francisco, San Francisco Public Library's first summer reading program for teens. Designed as a giant scavenger hunt, Streets of San Francisco will suggest activities to enjoy and books to read, as well as offering lots of prizes, ranging from brand new books to free movie passes to gift certificates at restaurants. The program will run June 7th through July 19th, with a grand finale complete with prizes and refreshments on July 25th in the Corred Auditorium at the main library. Streets of San Francisco will be offered at the following libraries. Bayview Anna E. Wadden, Fernal Heights, Excelsior, Glen Park, Portola, Sunset, Visitation Valley, and the main library at Civic Center. The program is offered to teens ages 14 through 18 or to anyone entering high school in the fall. There will be a kickoff for the Streets of San Francisco Teen Summer Reading Program at the Visitation Valley Branch on Friday, June 6 at 3.30 p.m. and at the Bayview Anna E. Wadden Branch Library on Saturday, June 7th at 3 p.m. Streets of San Francisco is sponsored by Friends of the San Francisco Public Library and the Mayor's Office of Children, Youth, and Their Families. And now here's Zane with a great teen book review. Hi, my name is Zane, and the book I'm going to be describing is Wizard's First Rule by Tara Goodkind. It's a fantasy science fiction novel of really, really nice quality. Uh, it's really, really good for a few reasons. The characters are really in-depth. It's one of those books where you can seem to get into their mind. You can almost predict their actions sometimes, but still there's enough element of doubt so that it's still interesting. Uh, the world in which the book is set is a really well thought out uh, scene. It's extremely intricate and the subplots fit nicely into it so that it makes for a really interesting book. Um, the plot also, because it's such a large book, um, you can, it's got tons of subplots besides the main theme which is as usual light versus darkness, but there are lots of personal dilemmas and jaunts off the main plot, which really uh, enhances the quality of the book. It's, yeah, it's, it's long, but it's intricate and detailed enough to keep you going throughout the whole thing. As I was reading it, it really, the time really seemed to pass, and I've read it quicker than most uh, smaller books than I've ever read. I think it's a really great book, and I suggest it for anybody who likes science fiction fantasy reading. Books, check them out. Books, check them out. Pick up a book. You got a fantasy? Imagination can take you to where you want to be. Are you curious? How can you find out? Books. Check them out. Books. Check them out. Read about stars and cars, playing electric guitars, or cops that work hard, patrolling the boulevard, the heavyweight champ and his craziest bow. Books. Check them out. Books. Check them out. At your library. In conjunction with the Goethe Institute and other participating organizations, the San Francisco Public Library presents The Struggle Toward Sexual Liberation. 1897 to 1997. The Legacy of Magnus Hirschfeld. Hirschfeld founded the Scientific Humanitarian Committee on May 14, 1897, in Berlin. Considered the world's first organization dedicated to fighting the legal intolerance against homosexuality, its 10,000 volumes from Dr. Hirschfeld's incomparable library at the Institute for Sexual Science were among the first books to be burned by the Nazis. In commemoration of 100 years of the struggle toward sexual liberation, the library is displaying an exhibit of books and ephemera from the collection of Mel Gordon, documenting the life and times of Dr. Magnus Hirschfeld in the James C. Hormel Gay and Lesbian Center through July 13th. Also as part of the citywide festival, the library is presenting a series of Sunday lectures at 1 p.m. in the main library's Corette Auditorium. 
On June 1st, Susan Stryker presents Magnus Hirschfeld and Transgender Identity. And David Bial will present Jewish Berlin, the 1920s, and Sexology on June 8th. The lecture series and exhibit are free and open to the public. Also, the June Thursday at Noon video series will feature 100 Years Toward Sexual Liberation in Germany, the legacy of Magnus Hirschfeld. The series begins on Thursday, June 5th with Desire, Sexuality in Germany, 1910 to 1945. Using archival film and photographs, interviews with men and women who survived Nazi oppression, and commentary by contemporary historians, director Stuart Marshall chronicles the development of attitudes toward sexuality leading to the Nazi imprisonment of homosexual men and women. This film is also thought to include much of the known footage of Magnus Hirschfeld. Freud, as well as Hirschfeld, did not accept that in Germany, as well as in Austria, male homosexuality was a crime. So Freud supported Hirschfeld's gay rights movement. He gave money to them, to their fund for propaganda, and so on. Freud was very skeptical that homosexuals could be turned around into a heterosexual man. On June 12th, Cabaret. Bob Fosse's dark version of Candor and Ebb's musical, based on Christopher Isherwood's stories, I Am a Camera, and Goodbye to Berlin. Set in 1930s Berlin, the film chronicles the adventures of fictional chanteuse Sally Bowles, in and out of the Kit Kat Club, as the Nazi presence becomes increasingly menacing. The June 19th showing begins with, We Were Marked with a Big A. Until this 1991 documentary was produced, no gay survivors of the concentration camps had ever told their stories, because they were subject to the same law used by the Nazis to imprison hundreds of German gays during World War II. Three survivors of the Holocaust powerfully describe how homosexuals were persecuted during the Third Reich. Konzentrationslager Sachsenhausen bei Berlin symbolisieren die Kennzeichnung der politischen Gefangenen. Doch wer weiß schon vom rosa Winkel der homosexuellen KZ-Häftlinge? Bis auf den heutigen Tag gibt es kaum Überlebende, die über die Grausamkeit der Haft sprechen wollten. Different from the others, a silent classic will also be showing on June 19th. June's Thursday at Noon video series concludes on June 26th with I Am My Own Woman. Charlotte von Malsdorf, born Lothar Berfeld in 1928, was brought up by her Nazi father, who wanted to make her into a proper soldier. In this docudrama starring Charlotte, director Rosa von Pronheim relates the incredible story of a warm-hearted, gentle human being who is also a courageous outsider and a born fighter. Ich habe dich schon länger beobachtet. Mit uns hat sich die Natur einen Scherz erlaubt. Du hättest ein Mädchen werden sollen und ich ein Mann. Bei mir im Haus kannst du gerne meine Mädchenkleider tragen. Aber draußen musst du vorsichtig sein. Mit. 
Das ist das Buch Die Transvestiten von Dr. Magnus Hirschfeld. Das liest ihr mal gut durch. Das geht uns beide an. That's 100 years toward sexual liberation in Germany. The legacy of Magnus Hirschfeld. Free every Thursday at noon during June in the main library's Corette Auditorium. Here's this month's San Francisco Public Library news and notes. The new Maine became the new home of the George Rickey kinetic sculpture Double L Eccentric Gyratory last month when the sculpture was installed in front of the library near the corner of Larkin and Fulton Streets. The Double L sculpture was a gift to the city from Dr. Carl Gerassi, the Stanford chemistry professor, novelist, and generous collector of modern art. The piece was formerly installed on the Woodside estate of Dr. Jurassi, who paid for most of the costs involved in moving and installing the sculpture at the new main site. Additional installation costs were paid for by the Art Commission. The day after the Double L sculpture was installed, Art Commission President Stanley Gatti hosted a public dedication ceremony that was attended by Library Commission President Steve Coulter, Mayor Brown, and Dr. Carl Jurassi. The L doesn't just stand for literature, library, letters, and so on. It's the greatest letter in the English alphabet. It stands for love, libido, lust, to give you just a few examples. But you know, if you look at City Hall, you could say it's liberty, laissez-faire. In San Francisco, you'd even say lunacy, meaning lunacy as a complementary term. It's one of the few towns where it is a complementary term. If you look at the federal bill, the state building, federal building, and you could talk about law and also largesse. You can talk about, you know, all kinds. L is a great letter. I must say, the fact that there are two L's in Willie, that I knew. I did not see a W here before. I was long looking for a DJ in here, I never saw it. So I'm amazed that they found W and E's in there, but I'm happy to do it. One last uh, remark I would like to make. I stopped by here yesterday evening, driving by, and I would say the great time to see it is in fact sunset, because as the sun comes this way here, you have these enormous shadows over the library, and it's usually quite windy, and these L's were really dancing, and there were four L's and not just two, and it's this mixture of literacy, law, love, laughter, light, and so on, which really all performs here in the square, which I think is something that really to me denotes the city of San Francisco. And since this is also a library and I'm now finished, I asked my secretary to call up, I didn't have the guts to go here, and ask whether they had any of my novels in the library. And to my pleasure, you did have my last three fiction books, but there's a whole pile of books right here. <laughs> which are also by me, including an autobiography, which you don't have. And I said, I will not only give it to you, but I offer to shelve them too, because I understand your problem. So if you tell me where to shelve them, I'll shelve them for you. Thank you. The 1982 Ricky sculpture rests upon a seven foot high pedestal. The two 18 foot L-shaped arms pivot on ball bearings on a Y-shaped base and are constantly changing in response to air currents. Sculptor George Rickey is considered a father of kinetic sculpture and his delightful works are installed throughout the world. On Saturday, June 14th, the Chinatown branch will celebrate the first anniversary of its reopening after undergoing extensive remodeling and seismic upgrading. Last year on June 15th, the expanded Chinatown branch was reopened amidst great fanfare as dragons and firecrackers scared off evil spirits before the public was allowed in to see the branch. The remodeling, which took over two years to complete, doubled the usable space of the branch and included a rooftop garden, a mezzanine-level computer lab, a new community meeting room, an expanded children's room, and an elevator for this now four-level branch. This month's one-year anniversary celebration open house event will include refreshments and tours of the city's busiest branch library. During this past year, the computer lab was opened and made operational, providing free access to computers and the internet to Chinatown branch patrons. 
Stop by the Chinatown branch at 1135 Powell Street on Saturday, June 14th from 1 to 5 p.m. and see the branch for yourself. The annual conference of the American Library Association is coming to San Francisco later this month. The conference will bring over 20,000 librarians to the city, and one of the planned festivities is a San Francisco Public Library and American Library Association-sponsored Family Festival at the Main Library, Saturday, June 28th, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. All Bay Area families and those attending the ALA conference are invited to attend this free festival. The fun will get underway with a marching band leading a parade around the outside of the Main Library and will continue inside the library in three locations with storytelling, dancing, crafts, hands-on science, and a visit by everyone's favorite collie, Lassie. Some of the performers scheduled to appear are Owele Makiba, Kevin Locke, Ethnotech, and Clara Yen. So join the fun at the ALA Family Festival, Saturday, June 28th, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Main Library Civic Center. And finally, this note. BookWorks, the eighth biennial members exhibition of the Pacific Center for the Book Arts, will be on display in the Main Library Skylight Gallery on the sixth floor through June 28th. Members of the Pacific Center for the Book Arts represent traditional craftsmanship and innovative experimentation. They are calligraphers, bookbinders, fine printers, book artists, and xerographers. The exhibit features a wide array of book art styles and methods, and is always a fascinating and fun visual treat. And that's at the Public Library News and Notes for now. June is Lesbian, Gay, Bi, Transgender Pride Month. And the San Francisco Public Library joins in the celebration with two great film showings. On Saturday, June 7th at 2.30 p.m., the library's Gay and Lesbian Center, in cooperation with Film Arts Foundation, proudly presents the world premiere of a new film documenting Camp Lavender Hill, the first summer camp for children of lesbian and gay parents. Filmmakers and camp participants and founders will share testimony on the value and necessity of this unique environment. Then on Monday, June 30th at 1 p.m., the library will be showing It's Elementary, talking about gay issues in school, directed by Academy Award-winning filmmaker Deborah Chasnoff. This groundbreaking documentary makes a compelling case that children should be taught to respect all people, including lesbians and gay men as part of their early education. The filmmakers have also been invited to this event. Programs for adults this month at the Main Library include, on Wednesday, June 18th, 6.30 p.m., the San Francisco Ethnic Dance Festival will present a lecture demonstration of Hawaiian hula with the renowned Na Le Hulu Aika Wekiu Company. On Saturday, June 21st, celebrate the 52nd anniversary of the signing of the United Nations Charter with an international film program beginning at 1 p.m., followed by a reception at 3.30. And on Wednesday, June 25th at 6 p.m., it's Tales from an Urban Jungle, The Wild Parrots of Telegraph Hill, a slideshow and lecture by Mark Bittner, an independent scholar and friend of the flock. It's all free at the Main Library. Thanks for watching at the Public Library here on City Watch Cable Channel 54. You can catch at the Public Library Monday mornings from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. and from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Friday evenings from 8 to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from 12 noon to 1 p.m. See you next time.